But if you look at Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt in particular, this was, I mean, a voracious reader, not of just American history, all history. He that wrote- That just such a history. badass. Jesus. Incredible. The-, <laughs> the, only, the only president who willed himself to greatness. That's yeah. like the amazing thing about him. He wasn't tested by a crisis, right? Like it wasn't, no, nah, he didn't have the Civil War. He didn't have World War II. He didn't have to found the country, literally, or like, you know, didn't have to stave off that. Or he didn't buy, you know, the Louisiana Purchase, like all that. He mm-hmm. literally came into a pretty, you know, static country and he could have just governed, you know, with, with, I mean, he was the person who came before him was assassinated. Like he easily could have coasted, but he literally willed the country into something more. And that is, that's always why I focus a lot on him too. Cause I'm like that in many ways, I wouldn't say it's easy to be great during crisis. I mean, like look at Trump, right? Yeah. But like, but there, it can bring out the best within you, yes. but it's a, it's a whole other level to bring out the best within yourself just for the sake of doing it. And yeah. that's, I think is really interesting. The speeches it. were amazing. I'm also a sucker for great speeches because mm-hmm. I, I, I tend to uh, see the role of the president as in part like, inspirer in chief sort of uh, to be able to i mean that's what great leaders do like ceos of companies and so on establish a vision a clear vision and like n- like hit that hard but the way you establish the vision isn't just like not to dig at joe biden but <laughs> like like sleepy boring statements you have to sell those statements and you have to you know, you have to do it in a way where everybody's paying attention. Everybody's excited. Yes. And uh, that, uh, uh, Teddy Roosevelt is definitely one of them. Obama was, a, I think, at least early on, I, I, I don't know, uh, was incredible at that. It does feel that the modern political landscape makes it more difficult to be inspirational in a sense, because everything becomes bickering and division. Yes. I do want to ask you- Please. Uh, about Trump. <laughs> Uh, so you're now a successful podcaster. <laughs> I've talked to Joe about Trump, uh, Joe Rogan, and he, Joe's not interested in talking to Trump. Mm-hmm. It's just fascinating. I try to dig into like why. Yeah. Uh, what would you interview uh, Trump on, like realignment, for example? Mm-hmm. And uh, do you think it's possible to do a two, three hour conversation with him where you will get at something? like human or you get something uh, like we were talking about the facade right. he puts forward do you think you get get past that no i don't <laughs> i i look i was a white house correspondent i observe i observe this man very closely i interviewed him i think if that mic is hot he knows what he's doing he just he's he's done this too long lex he just knows but right. do you think he's a different human now after the election do you think no. that? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I don't. I think he's been the same person since yeah. 1976. I I really do. Like yeah. basically 1976. I studied Trump a lot, and I think he's basically been the core of who he is, and elements of that ever since he built that sent you know the ice rink in Central Park okay. and got that media attention. That was it. Yeah, he's a fascinating study. I still I feel uh, there's a hope in me that. There would be a podcast like uh, like a Joe Rogan, like a long form podcast where it's something could be, you know, and you're actually a really good person to do that, where you can have a real conversation that looks back at the election and reveal something on us. But perhaps he's thinking about running again, and and so maybe he'll never let down that guard. Yes, but like you know, I I just love it when uh, there's this switch in people where you start start looking back at your life and wanting to tell stories Mm -hmm. like you know trying to extract wisdom and like realizing you're in this new phase of life where like the battles have all been fought now you're this old like former warrior and now you can tell the stories of that time and it seems like trump is still (laughs) at it like the young warrior he is he's not in the mode of telling stories you know what i got from rogan he's the only president who didn't age well in office it's true (laughs) right like because and this is what i mean because he lives in the moment like the job actually aged obama i mean i mean bush same thing even clinton clinton was like fat yeah he looked miserable by like (laughs) 2000 hw like yeah. i mean reagan famous actually yeah pretty much everybody i think about um yeah including john f kennedy who got much sicker while in office yeah. the job like weighs on you and makes you physically ill 
Trump was, he's the only person who just that was he amazing. didn't happen to. He almost got, gotten stronger and he was uh, one of the most divisive, like uh, the climate, there's so many people attacking him, so much hatred, so much love and hatred. And it was just, he, it was, I mean, it was, uh, whatever it was, it was uh, quite masterful and a, and, a, and a fascinating study. I, 